All right, here's FRQ number two from the 2024 AP Physics 1 exam. Uh, as usual, if there are any corrections, I will put it in the description below. So student hangs a spring, uh, sorry, not the description, a pinned comment. Student hangs a spring of unknown spring constant K vertically attaching one end to a stand as shown. Um, the other end of the spring is a small loop, which small cylinders can be hung. In addition to the spring, the student has access only to a variety of cylinders of known masses, stopwatch, and a digital scale. So we have masses, stopwatch, and, uh, no, and a digital scale. Design experimental procedures the student used could determine the spring constant of K. In the following table, list quantities would be measured using only the provided equipment in your experiment. Define each symbol with uh, each quantity. So um, what we want to do is you always want to vary a quantity. So we're going to measure the masses of different cylinders. So we're going to pick a cylinder and um, you could do period of motion if you wanted to because you have a stopwatch. Um, but I'm just going to weigh it and then see how far it stretches. Oh, actually, ooh, we don't have a way to measure the distance. That's kind of interesting. So what we're going to have to do is because we have a, we, we can't measure the distance. I was going to use um, Hooke's law to sort of like know how much it stretched, but we don't have unfortunately a ruler so we have a stopwatch which means all we can do is cause it to oscillate so we're going to focus on this okay we're going to figure out k we're going to vary the masses and we're going to observe the period of the motion all right so that's kind of the main idea so step one is the mass of cylinder of or mass of weight or, oops uh, sorry mass of weight here. It's kind of interesting. They kind of spell it out what you have to use it for. And then we're going to measure, say, the period of motion. The period of T. Okay. So, and then um, what we're going to do is we're going to say step one, we're going to measure the mass of a cylinder, of a weight. Call it M. We're going to attach the mass to the spring. We're going to pull it down and release and start the stopwatch. We're going to observe, you know, I like to, I like to say, you don't have to observe more than one. You can observe one cycle up and down once. Observe, I'm going to observe, um, you know, five cycles, because I think it's a little bit more accurate, and stop the stopwatch. And then record T is equal to the observed time divided by five, just to note that. And then five, we're going to repeat three times, just for accuracy. And then six, we are then going to repeat one through five with uh, multiple masses with, um, I don't know, we'll just do five masses, five masses, five different masses. Okay, so that's kind of the setup. Um, let's see, indicate the qualities that can be used to produce a linear graph whose slope can be used to, used to determine. So what we're gonna use is we're gonna use u, t, t is two pi root m over k. Let's, we want, I want K to be my slope, so I'm gonna square both sides. There's a lot of ways you can do this, honestly. And move K to the T squared is K is equal to four pi squared M. And so um, I want this to be my slope. So this is gonna be my Y value. So my vertical axis could be four pi squared M. And then my horizontal axis could be T squared. You could move the four pi squared over to here. So it could be t squared over 4 pi squared, and then m is just sort of the y value. Um, there's a lot of possibilities in here. So you can rearrange this. But the idea is that this is my slope. This is my x variable. This is my y variable. Now, I might move it over just because it might be annoying to calculate if they give you data. But they didn't give any data, so we just leave it like that. In a different experiment, student attaches one inch of the spring of force sensor attached to a wall. The other end of the spring is attached to a cart with a mass of 0 0.25 kilograms. The student places a motion detector uh, to the right of the cart as shown in figure two and pulls the cart to the right a small distance so the spring is stretched. The student releases the cart from rest and the spring cart oscillates, okay? Falling graph shows the velocity as the spring is a function of time and then here it looks like the force as a function of time. Using the data in the velocity time graph, calculate the change in kinetic energy of the cart from 0 0.5 seconds. So we wanna use the, only the velocity time graph. We're gonna use the from 0.5 seconds all the way to two seconds here. 
Okay, and then the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy is the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, which is 1 half mvf squared minus 1 half mv0 second. Show your steps and substitutions. You should do this anyway. They shouldn't have to tell you that, but you should do that. So this is 1 half 0 0.25. Now the final velocity, the end of the motion at the two seconds, because it's like the difference between where I'm two and that is um, zero. The y value is zero here, right? So it's just zero squared minus one half times 0 0.25. And then what is the initial velocity? The initial velocity is three, the y value at 0.5 seconds. So that's three squared. Did I read that right? Three, no, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, why is it? 0 0.3. And so then we're going to do, so this is going to be 0 right here. So it's going to be negative 0 0.5 times 0 0.25 times 0 0.3 squared. And that's going to be negative 0 0.01125 joules. You probably do have to use the negative sign because they ask for the change. They didn't ask for the magnitude of the change. They asked for the change, which is final minus initial. Using the data in the force time graph, estimate the change in momentum of the cart from here. Briefly explain how you arrive at your solution. So we have a force versus time graph. What do we think about there? The area, the y value is the force, but the area is equal to F delta T, which is the change in momentum. So we want the area from the 0.5 seconds to the two second here. So if we look at here, this area here, I would say, like, if first of all, I would say this area and this area are gonna cancel because anything below the x-axis is negative area. So this area is cancel. So then we're really just talking about this area right here. Okay, so I would maybe say it looks a little bit like a triangle, and that area is one half, and it's below the x-axis, negative one half, times the the the. It's a triangle, so the width is zero point five, and then the height is zero point zero eight, and the whole thing is negative. You could put the negative here and not out here; it doesn't doesn't really matter. But I got negative zero point zero two kilogram meters per second. Okay, so that is what I would put there. So that is going to be, let me just write it down here, negative 1 half times 0 0.5 times 0 0.08 equals negative 0 0.02 kilogram meters per second. Briefly explain, it is the area under the curve, under graph from 0 0.5 to 2.0 seconds. Did the data in the velocity time graph confirm your estimation from part C? Explain. Well, let's take a look at how how would we look at this. So this is the change in kinetic energy. So that means the, um, well, so, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's take a look at this from part C2. They were talking about this one. So the change in momentum is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum, right, which is mv final minus mv initial. And so that's 0 0.25 times the final velocity, which is 0 0.3, or sorry, 0, minus 0 0.25 times uh, 0 0.3. So this is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. And so negative 0.25 times 0.3 is negative 0 0.075 kilogram meters per second. So I would say, no, it's a little bit off. Um, no, the velocity time graph has or um, has a indicates a, has a much has a higher change in momentum than the area estimate and I don't know if there's something wrong with the data or let me see um, 0 0.25 one half Let's see, did I do this area? We did from here to here, here to here. Um, 0 0.25, I just wanna double check, just because it, it might be that the correct answer is that it's different. That might be the part that just throws me off. Um, 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.08. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any wrong, anything wrong with my calculations. So I think this is not a good, This is there's a misalignment here, right? And I think that that's normal. Um, okay, um, I guess that's number two.